on the dotted line. Thanks for the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Living and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at life, life. with my own eyes. Today, Liberty's kids. The peace died on the greens of Lexington and Concord. It was murdered again at Bunker Hill. There is no peace in the hearts and minds of the countless thousands who have been forced to swallow the vile brew of British tyranny. If you insist on war, you shall have it. Massachusetts is free to fight England until the moon falls into the sea, but she will fight alone. May, 1775. Dearest mother, Dr. Franklin continues to dazzle me. In these troubled times, when so many people are nervous, or angry, or frightened, Dr. Franklin's resolve is reassuring. <gasps> Good morning. Gather round. We have a busy week ahead of us, and I have a special mission for each of you. The delegates are arriving for the Second Continental Congress. Great! The Gazette will cover Congress from gavel to gavel. I won't miss a thing. Perhaps not, but you missed everything else. Not yet, James. Henri, the delegates will need fresh water. Keep the buckets filled. <laughs> I've been thinking, Dr. Franklin. How about a story on our own delegate, Mr. Dickinson? Hold your horses, James. Sarah, I want you and Moses to greet Colonel George Washington when he arrives from Virginia. Assist <gasps> him in whatever he may need. This Colonel Washington must be important? During the French and Indian War, he saved many lives. I expect big things from him in Congress. I'll get my shawl. That leaves me. What do you have in mind, sir? Maybe I could talk to this Colonel Washington? No, James. No journalists will be allowed in the hall. No journalists? But... The delegates are here to deal with life and death matters. They'll need to voice their opinions freely, privately. Then what in the world am I supposed to do? Someone has to look after the delegates' horses. Horses? <laughs> you may need a bigger broom. You may need a shovel. I can't believe my luck. The biggest story in the world is right here in Philadelphia, and I'm stuck babysitting a bunch of dumb horses. Look, that's John Adams. John Adams? I thought his name was Sam Adams. That's his cousin. John Adams is the smartest lawyer in New England. Let's find out what he's up to. A leader is what we need. What about these? I'm sure Mr. Adams and the others are thirsty after their long journeys. Now get going. Hey! I'm going to nominate Colonel Washington. He's the perfect man to head the new Continental Army. Why not your own Mr. Hancock? I know he has designs on the top job. Impossible. Washington is the only hero we have. The only man the whole country will support. Will New England accept a Virginian? A Southern man is exactly what we need. Otherwise, the revolution will remain New England's war. Excuse me, excuse me. Ben, who is this? A French small fry. Henri, go, go! <laughs> Pardon, sorry. Hold your horses, lad. James is supposed to hold the horses. I'm the water boy. Come on, Henri. I have to find out what's happening. That bell means Congress is about to start. Oh, but Ben Franklin said no journalists. Am I to understand that you're a journalist, young sir? James Hiller, Pennsylvania Gazette. It's a pleasure to meet a fellow newspaper man. You're a newspaper man, too? Paul Wentworth's the name. I understand your little friend here has a ticket into the hall. Ticket? I've got a bucket into the hall. Two of them. And I've got a pocket full of coins for every scrap of news you bring out with your empty buckets. Coins? I'm all ears. Wait a second. Dr. Franklin said we can't print anything until after Congress is over. And Dr. Franklin is right. We wouldn't want to do anything to hurt the cause. Exactly. However, James, someday it will be up to newspaper men like us to tell the people what went on. 
And we can't do that without facts, can we? No, we can't. Facts are everything. If you want to make it in this business, you have to go where the action is. Are you game, James? How many coins are we talking about? Quiet, Henri. This is between a couple of newspaper men. Isn't that right, Paul? That's a fact, James. That's a fact. Pardon me, I'm a stranger to your fair city. Is this where Colonel Washington is staying? Yes, sir, but he's just now arrived. Whoa! <laughs> Such poor workmanship on this coach. It's an outrage. Allow me to be of service, Colonel. My name is Moses. Who's your master, Moses? I'm a freed man, sir, in the employ of Dr. Benjamin Franklin. I'll have your coach fixed good as new. Apparently, our English cousins have contempt for us. They've turned the colonies into a dumping ground for all the shoddy goods they themselves would not have. Moses will fix it, sir. He's very talented. And who are you, young lady? Sarah Phillips, my lordship. That isn't necessary, Miss Phillips. I'm not a lord. I'm just a citizen like anyone else. I beg your pardon, your lord. Colonel Washington. Dr. Franklin has sent us to assist you. Excellent. I look forward to seeing the good doctor again. Moses, the future is in the hands of men such as yourself. Homegrown craftsmen. The job is yours. It will be an honor, sir. The honor is mine. <laughs> recognizes the delegate from Pennsylvania Colony, Mr. Dickinson. Gentlemen, hear me clearly. There are still those of us who believe in a peaceful resolve to this conflict. We are brothers, England and America. Surely there is another course short of all-out war. The peace died on the greens of Lexington and Concord. It was murdered again at Bunker Hill. There is no peace in the hearts and minds of the countless thousands who have been forced to swallow the vile brew of British tyranny. Mr. Adams, you spit fire well, but the king's guns spit lead. You will lead us down the path to ruin. And you, sir, will lead us down the path to slavery. We can't win a war with you. If you insist on war, you shall have it. But it will be New England's war, Mr. Adams. Massachusetts is free to fight England until the moon falls into the sea, but she will fight alone. Gentlemen, order! The chair recognizes the distinguished gentleman from Philadelphia, Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Friends, I remind you that we lack not in great talkers, but great doers. I find myself in agreement with Mr. Adams. War is upon us, like it or not. Our great comfort is that we honestly and faithfully did everything in our power to prevent it. But war is here on our doorstep, whether our doorstep be in Boston or Baltimore. Forgive me, my voice grows hoarse. Cold water, Dr. Franklin? Notebook? Pencil, please. Not my pencil, please. I hate to nag you, but... I know, I know, horses. Mr. Hiller, what have you learned? I learned that when Ben Franklin says no journalists, he means no journalists. He took my notebook and my pencil. Gangway coming through! What's ah! the hurry, young man? Ah! Sam Adams just kicked the bucket. Sam Adams is dead? Hey! No, he kicked my bucket, spilled water everywhere. Oh, what a mess. I can't believe this. I'm stuck out here while the story of the century is in there. It is a conundrum, isn't it? Conundrum? A problem. Forgive me, you're new to the newspaper game, but don't feel bad. Someday, when you are a real newspaper man, you'll know big words like conundrum. I am too a real newspaper man. Indeed. But do you have the fire in the belly to do whatever it takes to get the story? 
My belly's on fire. You tell me what facts you want, Mr. Wentworth, and I'll get them. Good. Excellent. Let's start with what they're up to in there. Is Congress going to raise an army? Who will lead the army? The facts, James. We must have the facts. I'm on it. Who, what, why, where, when, and how? Have you got a pencil? Much obliged. Here goes. Hm. You'd think a congressman wouldn't be so clumsy. Whoa! <gasps> oh. <laughs> Fact one. This isn't going to be easy. I must know what's going on in there. Enough of this tomfoolery. We tried it your way, now we do it my way. It certainly is an exciting time to be in Philadelphia. The city is alive with interesting new people. Exciting and dangerous. Mixed among the delegates to the Second Continental Congress are spies. We all have to watch our tongues. Drill, please. Drill, coming right up. <laughs> He's at Mr. Rodney's desk. Who's Rodney? Caesar Rodney. He's the head man in the colony of Delaware. What he says goes. I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. Haven't you written about him in your newspaper? Oh, that's Caesar Rodney, of course. What's happening now? Dr. Franklin has the floor. There are two voices here. One seeks reconciliation with England. The other seeks independence. I address the former. It was Parliament, remember, which has doomed our country to destruction. They have begun to burn our towns and murder our people. Look upon their hands. The fault lies not with Mr. Adams. The fault lies in London. Dr. Franklin has finished speaking. I don't see Henri. Okay, he's back. He's with... Oh, this is good. John Hancock. He's with John Hancock. I don't believe it. Hancock is not only talking to Henri, he's actually writing it down for him. If Congress does not take over the army at Boston soon, it will disintegrate. All hope will be lost. The time has come. We must have a general today. Gentlemen, I think the solution is obvious. John Hancock is my nominee to lead our new national army. Mr. Payne, you flatter me. But we also have a gentleman available of impeccable credentials. A southerner, Colonel Charles Henry Lee of Virginia. Who was born in England and who would be perfectly happy to be there now. The man we are looking for is among us. And he is a southerner from Virginia. I nominate, as General of the Colonial Army, Colonel George Washington. I lost Henri. He's so little. He vanished when Colonel Washington stood up to speak. Colonel Washington is speaking? There he is. Look at him go. He must have big news. <laughs> Henri's news, come on! <laughs> Henri? Henri? Excuse me, a boy just ran in here. About this tall? There you are. Where are your notes? I've been watching you. You've been doing great. Watching me? How? With a spyglass. You've got a spyglass? <gasps> Let me see it! James, wouldn't it be better to discuss this outside? Um, yes, of course. Come on, Henri. Hurry up! <laughs> Stop it! That tickles! If you got everything down on paper, I'll be tickled. What does it say? Is that French? I get coins for this, right? Of course, I'm a man of my word. Okay, voila! Here's what I found out. John Adams wants poultry, pulled poultry. What? Oh, you know, not poultry cut in slices, but pulled from the bone. Sam Adams wants beef, unless it's too well done. Then he wants mutton. <gasps> oh, here's something strange. John Adams won't eat mutton because it's a favorite British food. 
Let me see that. John Hancock, potato soup? He's got a bad tooth. You were getting lunch orders? I can't believe you messed this up. Sam Adams is the one who messed it up. He spilled ink all over my lunch order. Oh, my coins, s'il vous plaît. What are these? I've never seen coins like this. They're Greek, very old, older than Hercules. The two slits in each coin enabled the ancient Greeks to string them on chains and wear them around their neck for safekeeping. Oh, thanks! If you want any more facts... I'll get them myself. You failed me, both of you. And the only reason I paid you is I'm a man of my word. <laughs> How could you do this to me? Mr. Wentworth is an important newspaper man. He publishes a paper I've never heard of, and you made me look like... like... like a kid! I'm new at this. That's it. I'll get the facts myself and make everything right with Mr. Wentworth. I'll help. I'd like to get more of these Greek coins. <gasps> hey, those are mine. You're back to being a water boy. This is a job for a newspaper man, not a newspaper boy. Ah Who's the water boy now? <laughs> James, what are you doing here? Nothing. This whole day has been a big waste. What are you doing here? Delivering Colonel Washington's coach. Where is Henri? I don't care. What's wrong? Hmm. I had a chance to impress an important newspaper publisher from New Hampshire, Mr. Wentworth, but I came up empty. Wentworth? I don't know any Wentworth who publishes a paper in New Hampshire. Well, he is who he says he is. He even paid us. He's a man of his word. See for yourself. Those aren't coins, silly. They're buttons. Buttons? I've sewed buttons like those in my father's uniforms. These buttons were minted three years ago by King George to decorate the coats of gentlemen invited to the king's birthday party. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Whoever your Mr. Wentworth is, he must be a close friend of King George. I have an idea. Quick, a pencil. My presence here will stifle free discussion. Since my appointment is the issue at hand, I will retire to allow you to speak your minds. Good evening. I received your note at my boarding house. You have facts? I interviewed the delegates, every single one of them. It took me all night to track them down. It's all there. The size of the new National Army, what General Hancock plans to do to drive the Redcoats out of Boston, it's the biggest story of the year. I told you I'd get the facts, and I'm a man of my word. I must go. I have to write my story and get it back to my paper. You're a first-rate newspaper man, James Hiller. Well done. And you're a rotten spy. <laughs> My guess is right. Mr. Wentworth is reporting to someone. The question is, who? Look! A boat! Eight men could fit in this. We need to be careful. Redcoats! I want to get closer! I'll go with you. Henri, take Moses' tool pouch. We'll meet back on the road. Hancock will be the general of the Colonial Army. John Hancock. The rumor is it's Washington. The rumor is wrong. They put the Washington story out to mislead us. Hancock will lead the rebel army, and his plans call for a march on Rhode Island. You trust your source? A gullible child. He spilled the beans. A stupid boy. Typical colonial. Grand ideas. No schooling. Easily duped. Excellent. Let's move out. <laughs> Sarah! I'm here. That was frightfully awkward for a while, wasn't it? I was a fool. I wanted so badly to be a big shot journalist, I almost gave away secrets to the enemy. But you outsmarted them. You're British. How does that make you feel? If Colonel Washington is announced as General of the Army tomorrow, word will get to the British soon enough. And that man who deceived you and Henri will look like a fool. I can live with that. Look! 
What's happening? Oh, oh, wait. I'm wearing silk garments! My suit will be ruined! Henri! Great job! You know, I don't ask you for one moment to surrender your hope for a peaceful resolve to these problems. Thank you. I do pray for that. The only hope the colonies have to avoid all-out war is in the strength of our army and the strength of our resolve. I like General Washington. I hope the great men of this Congress work as hard to find peace as General Washington does to prepare the army for war. That will depend on Parliament. You know, Sarah, if things get too uncomfortable, we will find a way to get you back home. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Come on, you're late! And on the issue of General of the Continental Army, we call upon George Washington. I accept this momentous duty because this Congress desires it. I beg it be remembered by every gentleman in this room that I this day declare with utmost sincerity, I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Dear Mother, this is the first time I have felt that I am, in fact, living events which will be remembered by other generations. I remain with a confused heart. I pray for peace, but fear we are heading towards war. Today's episode of Liberty's Kids. It's ordinary soldiers who are making great sacrifices. They've only got five musket balls apiece and almost no powder. Our men will have to make every shot count. We are better armed and better trained. We will take both of those hills, Sergeant. Whatever it takes, whatever it costs. Hold your fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Foolish Americans, don't they understand what will happen to them? The rebels are building fortifications. They're going to force my hand. What are your orders, General Howe? We're going to have to blast them off those hills. I had hoped they'd come to their senses and spare themselves. see all of Boston Harbor from here. The Redcoats won't let us stay here without a fight. The men have worked all night, General Putnam. If the Lobsterbacks try and take Breed's Hill, we'll make them pay a heavy price. If the men are brave and don't panic, I'd have more confidence if we had stores of ammunition. Colonel Prescott, every shot will have to find its mark. 17 June, 1775. Dearest Mother, I am in a place called Bunker Hill, near the city of Boston. <gasps> I'm glad you cannot hear the terrible sounds. The awful battles of Lexington and Concord are the cause of all this trouble. The colonists seem determined to drive our troops away from Boston. 
But there's a spark of good news. There's a British officer who might have some knowledge of Father's whereabouts. Oh. I'm hoping to find him and learn what I can. <gasps> Please do not worry about me, Mother. I am out of harm's way. I am worried about James and Henri. They've gone to interview the rebel militia for Dr. Franklin's Gazette. <coughs> Still, I can't imagine even they would be reckless enough to get caught up in this. If nothing else, maybe this day will bring us news of Father. I promise to tell. What have we here? <gasps> Could we have taught ourselves a rebel spy? Sergeant Wellwright? It is I, Sarah Phillips. I'm a guest at the Essex House. Yes, of course, Miss Phillips. But this is no place for a British subject. These hills are crawling with rebels. I am still looking for Lieutenant Hampton. Ah, yes. The man who served under your father. But it's too dangerous for you to stay here. I'll send Hampton around after we put those rebels in their place. But I... I'll hear no more of this, young lady. I insist. Corporal, escort Miss Phillips home. This will allow you to pass through all checkpoints and rejoin us in battle. Is there ever a time you're not hungry? Only when I'm eating. You expect me to take orders from you? Who made you king? Colonel Prescott. That's who. I don't serve under Colonel Prescott. I'm with Captain Parker. Whoa! One more like that, I'll resort to fisticuffs. These men are going to fight the British? Looks to me like they'll be fighting each other. They're nervous and angry. Look, Henri, here we are at the fence at Bunker Hill. About 500 yards away is the fort at Breed's Hill. Here you can see in where the British are. Now come on, we've got to find Dr. Warren and stay away from any fighting. Who is this Dr. Warren we're looking for? An old friend of Dr. Franklin's, one of the leaders of the Massachusetts Sons of Liberty. He'll help us get our story. How will we recognize him? Sarah and I met him during Paul Revere's ride. He's a wonderful man. You're going to love him. And with you around, I'll be needing a doctor. So, Corporal, what's your opinion of the rebels? I have no opinion, ma'am. It's not my place. I just do my duty. Tell me, why are you looking for Lieutenant Hampton? My father is in the Ohio wilderness, and we've not heard from him. I'm told the lieutenant may have seen him. Corporal, won't you please help me find this man who could lead me to my father? Afraid not, Miss Phillips. Orders and all. Oh! Corporal, my locket fell off. Very well. There. There you are, Miss. Forgive me, Corporal, but I must find my father. Yeah! Wait! Miss Phillips! Come back! Dr. Warren! James! You must leave, son. The British will arrive shortly. Leave? But the people need to understand what's happening here. You're right, of course. I admire your courage. Gentlemen, James writes for the Pennsylvania Gazette. He wrote those wonderful stories on Paul Revere's ride and the heroic events at Concord and Lexington. Very well done. Good. 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 Is this young man a journalist too? Henri's only interested in finding the best pastry shops. Well, come along. I'm looking for General Putnam and Colonel Prescott, but Henri must go to Cambridge, away from danger. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. State your business. I'm on a special mission involving a British soldier. And exactly what mission would you be performing? This says permit bearer to pass, and that is the seal of Sergeant Wellwright. Do you recognize it? 
Good. Then tell me your name, soldier, so Sergeant Wellwright will know whom to have court-martialed. Very well. I am seeking a Lieutenant Hampton. Do you know him? He's leading one of the companies that will take Bunker Hill. Yeah! Phew. I wish James could have seen that. And thank goodness Mother didn't. This is mad! That's it. Come on, Stockton, we're through here. You men there, return to your positions. Sorry, General Putnam, but we haven't had sleep or food. You're not paying us enough for this. We're not paying you anything. <gasps> the only payment I can offer you is freedom from the tyranny of the British Parliament. Praise be! If Dr. Warren is joining the fight, then I'm staying! Good, we need you. Dr. Warren, you couldn't have come at a better time to assume command. I wouldn't dream of assuming command from such an experienced soldier as you. I wish only to serve where I can be most useful. That, sir, would be where the Redcoats are going to attack first. Reed's Hill. There you can assume command from Colonel Prescott. General Putnam, I wish no command here. I would consider it a privilege to fight under Colonel Prescott. Need another volunteer to go fight on the hill with Dr. Warren? Thank you, soldier. But Dr. Warren, why would you risk your life as an... Well, an ordinary soldier. It's ordinary soldiers who are making great sacrifices. I would be honored to stand alongside these men. Anyone can speak about his beliefs, but it's soldiers who shed their blood to make those beliefs a reality. Could you slow down? I need to write. Sorry, lad, no time. But remember, it is your duty to tell the world that we are willing to die for our freedom. You can count on me, Dr. Warren. Good man. Now it's time for Henri to go to Cambridge. Yes, sir! Run, go! Run, go! Come on! Ready, men! The attack is beginning! James, stay back here by the fence and away from Breed's Hill. Be careful, Dr. Warren, please. Almost on top of them! They've only got five musket balls apiece, and almost no powder. Our men will have to make every shot count. Steady, men! Hold your fire until you see the whites of their eyes! I was trained to save lives, not take them. If you can't fight, we would understand. No one would think you a coward. I abhor fighting, but believe in the cause of liberty. But for freedom, we must fight. So I shall. I hate them, Redcoats. Try not to let it be about hatred, soldier. There are times when a man has to stand up for his rights, but he never has to hate. Ready? Treated. I am most displeased. Those ragtags turned us back. Many casualties. Hmm? Shh. Henri, it is I. The reinforcements have arrived, sir. More than they can imagine. 
We are better armed and better trained. We will take both of those hills, Sergeant. Whatever it takes, whatever it costs. Did you find the man who knew your father? He's with the British attacking the hill. Where's James? Up there, near the fighting. You heard what he just said? James has to get out of there. Can you find him? Certainement. Have your men seal off this side of the hill so the rebels cannot get reinforcements of their own? Yes, sir. Here, you may need this. It's a pass you can use to talk your way through any checkpoint. Won't you need it to find the man you're looking for? Don't worry about that. Just go. I'm sorry, Father, but I think this is what you would have wanted me to do. Okay, I'm supposed to be a newspaper writer. So write. B -b 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 Bunker Hill, J -j -j June 17th, today, a small, under-equipped band of colonist volunteers defeated the best the British... James! James! What are you doing here? Sarah sent me to warn you. You've got to get out of here. The British are sending more soldiers. Lots more! Oh, no! No! They're attacking a second time. Come on, let's get out of here! No, wait! They brought up artillery! And more reinforcements. I need volunteers to accompany me to the aid of Colonel Prescott on Breed's Hill. That would be folly, sir. Our men will be out of powder and gunshot before we could reach them. You're right, of course. But Dr. Warren is over there! I'm sorry, son. He's right. There's nothing to be done. We've got to retreat and save the men we can. Dr. Warren and Prescott will hold out and cover us. Steady, men! Regroup! We hold our fire to a little close. Make the most of your ammunition. Then we'll fall back. Empty! Ah! Sons of Liberty, Massachusetts, man. Henri, make sure Sarah gets to safety. Where are you going? To find Dr. Warren. James! Come back, son! Colonel Prescott! We lost the hill, James. Ran out of ammunition. One more volley and we'd have stopped him cold. Have you seen Dr. Warren? It was chaos up there. Last I saw him, he was covering our retreat. Best you come along with us to the Charlestown Neck. You might find him there. They're retreating. The hill is ours. General Gage will want to report. Tell him it was a dear-bought victory. Another such will ruin us. General, a mission to check on the wounded. Granted. I'll join you. <laughs> Dr. Warren? Has anyone seen Dr. Warren? He was behind me. Back there. Thanks. <laughs> Nearly half our men dead or wounded. It's a disaster. We might as well have lost the hill. We won the hill, Sergeant. You'd best remember that. It's just a hill. 
Sir! Lieutenant Hampton? Lieutenant Hampton! <laughs> Corporal? You can stop looking for my brother. He was killed. Your brother? Lieutenant Hampton was my brother. But you never told me. You didn't give me a chance. I'm sorry, Miss Phillips, but there will be no help finding your father today. I'm sorry about your brother, Corporal. Thank you, Miss Phillips. <sighs> Dr. Warren! Dr. Warren! Dr. Warren? Sorry, I thought you were Dr. Warren. Dr. Warren saved my life. He saved many lives covering our retreat. It was the bravest thing I ever seen. I tried to get his body, but... Body? I'm sorry, son. Dr. Warren? Gone? But... but how can that be? He was such a good man. We lost many a good man today. Then what I will write is that the price of freedom is not cheap. James, are you all right? I'm fine, but Dr. Warren's dead. Oh no! I'm so sorry, James. I know how much you admired him. And I've got to write that the colonists lost their first real battle with the British. That will weaken our cause, the very cause for which Dr. Warren gave his life. Maybe the story is not what you think it is. What do you mean? What happened at Bunker Hill is in the eye of the beholder. We, uh, the British, sustained hundreds of casualties. Really? I was in their camp. They may have taken Bunker Hill, but they feel like they lost. This was a blow. You were in their camp? Looking for the man who knew your father? And? Killed. I'm sorry, Sarah. Did Henri find you? Of course I did. James, who won the battle? I don't know that anyone did. But our job is to report. So let's get back to Philadelphia. What's the matter, Henri? I've never seen you throw away food. After all this, I'm suddenly not so hungry. Quite a story, you two. Dr. Warren was quite a man. He sacrificed so much to help others live. A lot of people made sacrifices at Bunker Hill. You can tell Dr. Franklin I'm ready to print. What in blazes could be jamming the works this time? Pastry? <laughs> Dr. Franklin, Moses is ready when you approve our story. Now let's see. Hmm, the colonists suffered heavy casualties, but withstood the best the British had to offer, defeated only by a lack of powder. There's only one thing I should like to add. By standing together, the colonial militias proved they have the will to take on the powerful British army. The name Bunker Hill will be remembered in history as the event that turned a Massachusetts rebellion into America's revolution. The king has lost his colonies. Dearest mother, though I am well, my heart is heavy. I regret that my long journey to Boston yielded no word of father. Sadly, the fighting at Bunker Hill resulted in the death of Lieutenant Hampton. Many others died as well, and along with them, I fear any hope for peace also died at Bunker Hill. We must accept that you and I will not be together soon. This will be a long and costly uprising. I remain your loving daughter, Sarah. <laughs>